Put on this computer. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, June 5th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello, I'm the Wombat. And our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Hello, Dread. Arr. From the west side of Canada. And George Brown, two and a half from uh, Eastern Hi. Tennessee. Hello, George. Good uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Today, we're going to be filling in the blanks and then going over listener comments. I'm going to have a fun time. And I guess before we get into filling in all the blanks, let's fill up on some noodles, courtesy of our own Dread Pirate Higgs. <laughs> Yeah, Hail Marinara, full of spice. The flying mm -hmm. spaghetti monster is filled with thee. Tasty art thou out among sauces, and blessed is the fruit of thy jar, tomatoes, although fools believe they are vegetables. Holy Marinara, chief amongst toppings, save us a plate for now, and at about six o'clock when dinner is served, if you mm -hmm. would be so kind. Raw, man. I was worried about that because that that invocation was a little bit saucy. Too saucy for everyone, <laughs> right? Guys, this is the part where we check in on everybody, seeing how we've been doing. Dread, how you been since last week? Uh, uh, well, I've been pretty good. I uh, I had reported uh, in February that I had received my security workers license with my drag mm -hmm. card. Yeah. And um, just a couple of weeks, a week ago or so, I, I got a letter from them saying they were demanding it back. They made an administrative error. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm now in pursuit of uh, getting the ombudsman on this. Um, I've, of course, over the last couple of years, I've tracked every conversation uh, through email. Yeah and have a lot to say about it because essentially they're just confabulating um you know in, in saying that it's this or it's that or it's the right. other thing when in fact they're expressing a, a clear uh, religious bias so right um yeah so i'm going to take them to task good We're good go good for, for it you. good luck good for you and keep that I, keep yeah. that id card there's no reason why you betcha that's the whole well, point you know as it turned out i actually got a call from a fella in ontario who had seen one of the articles uh, written about uh, my efforts and he has his driver's license with a colander. Nice. Um, so there again, it's, a, it's just another example that, you know, this is arbitrary uh, not to allow us to do it and mm -hmm. that uh, we gotta, we gotta put an end to that. So also, is it just weird? But like when I, when I have a picture on Facebook, whether I'm wearing headphones, glasses, no glasses, if I got a beard, if I got no beard, if I got hats on, if it's a sunny day and there's shade on my face, it still knows it's me. Like, yes. what is all this, you know, facial recognition software, you know, well, the, and, this is the, and that's the pretense, right? And because, you know, certainly uh, Sikh men um, are customarily, you know, those that, that are pretty orthodox about it, wear, wear turbans. And that doesn't interfere with facial recognition technology. Yeah. Neither, do, neither does this. Glasses yeah. do. Plus, yeah. Glasses what if you shave your face? Take your glasses off. Yeah. If but, you shave um, your beard, I'd have a hard time. I would be like, is that dread? No, that's dread. Yeah. But right. a computer I, would. But I mean, is there a law dead. saying that the, well, there has to, you have to have only your face takes, recognized facial by recognition? Facial recognition is this area right here. And that's it. It doesn't care about your head or the shape of your noggin or, or how much hair you've got on it. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So Larry, put a put a nail on this. What do you what were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say that is there a law that says your your face has to be recognized by a computer? I mean, <laughs> when did they start that? You know? Yeah, exactly. Is that part exactly. of the requirements for your for your driver's license? It is. Yeah. yeah. It, it just is. wait. 
wait until they put barcodes on our nose bridge then it's just like <laughs> oh, okay okay now now we can put whatever we want on our heads just make yeah, sure I the qr six, code six, right six. here is good. <laughs> <laughs> larry doing some biker riding i've heard why have you been yeah there? yeah i went out yesterday it's a beautiful day you rode for about an hour and a half hmm. and uh you really can't beat it i'm also playing a lot of computer games and of course still working uh, you're playing eve online too right no, I did for a long time, but uh, I kind of gave that up. Okay, it's just okay. too too many too many games going on. So there's there's too many I games. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm always plus I kept I kept my kept my ships kept getting destroyed, and they they cost a lot of money when you're in game. They cost so, real money. Uh, they can. Yeah, I don't generally spend that money on. I see. But I see. I see. They I had a benefactor to begin with, and are you familiar yeah. with a game called No Man's Sky? me yeah yes. I've, I've seen some advertisements for it yeah okay and some okay. videos of it okay 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 it's sort of like eve online but not as monetarily costly in fact well, it's actually... the thing about eve uh, no man's sky is you, you play pretty much the entire game from a cockpit and that would bore me <laughs> with eve online you, you can see you're outside of each ship and you have many different types of ships that have different capabilities sure in uh, eve online and, you're playing in front of a spreadsheet yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which well, is you, have, you have that element of it but it's yeah. live on on the side of your screen it, mm. it, the main action is still action Sure, sure. Larry is much more of a data guy. He's like, you got to give me some numbers. You got to give me some dice rolling. I need, I need that stuff to keep engaged. George Brown, second and a half. How have you been? Well, I'm okay. Um, <clears throat> I've been, I'm engaged in the process of changing my operating system on my computers Whoa. from one version of Linux to another. Okay. Uh, I need more um, software compatibility, applications mm. compatibility with my operating system. Sure. So um, and our very own Swedish Steve has given me some input. Good. Uh, he's, he's been using a distribution called Manjaro. Okay. And um, he's been pretty happy with it. So he's been filling me in on what he likes. And I think I'm moving in that direction. Not bad. I have been bad. using... Uh, there are about 2,000 different versions of Linux. Yeah. Linux is not a thing. Linux is a whole Wild West it's show. Like it's like atheism. It's like atheism. Yeah, it's like atheism <laughs> of things that don't talk with each other. Um, <laughs> no, nobody ever talks about that. So unfortunately, I cannot recommend Linux in any form to somebody mm. who is not already a geek. Sure. And I wish I could, because sure. the thing I really like about Linux is that unlike Facebook or Google or Windows, it does not track me. It leaves me alone. Sure. You know, I, I can rely on, the, on my own privacy, at least within my operating system. So at least within the operating me. system. Not bad. Within the operating system. Yeah. Dread, do not <laughs> throw shade on this. Let him have his let him have his happy <laughs> moment of solace. I, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Loma and Dada's trading room are both watching live right now. So. Fantastic. Oh, cool. Dada's trading room. We always appreciate your comments. Loma, same thing. Feel free to throw in some more comments in the show. Uh, how about we get into it? We're going to be doing a fill in the blank session round table and uh, first half of the show with a prompt. And I thought it would be interesting to see. Oh, Sarah is also watching as well. Sarah says, okay, they, wait, we'll get back to her. Uh, the prompt is just because you're an atheist and then you can fill in the blank and I, I can start with one. Uh, I'd like to get a round table on this, but my just because you're an atheist fill in the blank would be just because you're an atheist doesn't mean you got a degree in something. Uh, a lot of people tend to take atheism as like, a, uh, an establishment or of some sort of intellectual pursuit or some sort of credibility in being a more reasonable or critical thinker. And it's not necessarily the case that that is the position someone would have if they're an atheist. Atheism is literally just a lack of belief in something. And you could have that from just never being exposed to what the, the belief claim was in the first place. Likewise, if you don't believe in something, it's not necessarily a, a demonstration that you're a great critical thinker. It's, if anything, it's just um, a position that you have before you may ultimately start believing it, or um, you might be in a position where you're still skeptical and haven't met your standard of evidence, and the standard of evidence is what you're trying to maintain, or maybe your standard of evidence is unreasonably too high. There's a lot of reasons why people 
may not believe in something, but the fact that they don't believe is the, the, the point of atheism. It's just the lack of that belief. And there's nothing more to it than that. It's just simply a position on a, on a question on, do you believe this or do you don't believe it? Right. Yeah. And that, I wish we would just take a lot of the baggage off of it, a lot of the, the, the bad and the good baggage off atheism. And we just had it be, it's just a lack of belief and period, which means if you want to convince someone that they're to not be an atheist, make a better argument for the thing that you believe. So to meet their standard of evidence. One that's convincing. Their, yeah. What, mm-hmm. Make a, make a convincing case. Cause oftentimes, you know, you'll deal with an atheist who read the book that you've read. And, and if you, they didn't see the same thing you saw, that's not a problem on them. <laughs> that's a problem on you being a better <laughs> marketer for the thing that you guys so ardently believe. So just because you're an atheist doesn't mean you have a degree. Just take it as a position like statement. It's like, hey, I don't believe that. I don't believe you when you say that. I, I come up with a more convincing argument. I'll get there. That's my, that's my just because you're an atheist. Larry, what do you think? What's your fill in the blank for just because you're an atheist? Just because you're an atheist doesn't mean you have no morals, I guess Ooh. is the first thing, because that's that's an assumption that a lot of people make, you know, a lot of uh, believers make, that the only way that you can be a moral person is if you subscribe to the morals that the Bible gives you. And of course, they don't take a very good look at the morals that the Bibles give you either. They, it, if they did, they would uh, condone killing homosexuals. Mm. Um, women who are not virgins on their wedding night and things like that but they don't and they just pick and choose you know of course uh we have uh, morals that are given to us are handed down through the society that we live in and we have those morals because we develop those morals so that we can build a, a functioning society so we can live together in peace i dig it i dig it I love the idea that um, you have to remind people that atheism has atheists have morals because it, yeah. morality is so closely tied now by religious people to religion and theism, when truly that form of morality is lacking in so many different cap- uh, concepts. I also like to, to remind them that obedience is not Ex- morality. Yes. Morality is a system of behavior. It's not a, right. a code of edicts. Uh-huh. George, what do you think? Well, I'm asking myself a question, which is, um, is there a unified them? Uh, are, we, are we guilty of, of overgeneralizing about this them that we're talking about? Um, are there deviations among, among those, those other people who are not atheists? So, um, I mean, there are assumptions that I think that many Christians make about us, mm. um, and now here I am generalizing, but that's uh-huh. all I can do. It is I what think, it is. yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that generalizing is is the core of the human condition in a way, sure. and I, I won't I won't beat that one to death right now, but because but um, I think that um, for at least some or some religious people. We represent a threat to them, yes, because they they envision us as being active in some way, mm. and it's like my neighbor. I, I I said I allowed to my neighbor that this is a different neighbor um, that I don't really place any stock in heaven or hell, and her response to this was, "Do you hate God?" Now, I, if I, the Larry in my head says <laughs> that hatred is an active state mm. and one has to put some energy behind this. And that's a great point. Uh, La, La, the Larry in my head says you can't hate something that doesn't exist. So that's my inner process. Yeah. But what you can always ask my, them. You can always ask them why they what, hate what, Santa Claus. Yeah. I if like they don't it. believe in something doesn't mean you hate it. Right. I yeah, like the yeah. idea. I really like the That's idea. That's a good point, Larry. Christians are afraid of atheism because it represents a threat to them, right? Mm-hmm. And in the other way around, at least this is my perspective. I don't know if it's shared, 
But when I see someone that's an ardent Christian, I don't see that as a threat to atheism. I don't see that as a threat to my position. I see it more as a lost opportunity for being a bit more freer in their thinking. It's like a guy who lives next to a Walmart and buys only Walmart brands of everything. And it's like, you know, you can get socks from like Target or Amazon. It's like, no, I got to get the Walmart socks. It's like everywhere makes socks. It's like, well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. It's like, yeah, every all these things you think belong to Christianity, family, uh, happiness, like virtue, uh, morality, like those exist outside of the religion. In fact, some systems are even better, <laughs> substantially so. So it's like, I wish, I wish Christians had the opportunity to, to, to get out without the social stigma or the family reliance, or the peer pressure of staying inside their codified systems belief. That's, that's, it's, it's an empathy thing for me. Anyway, Dread Pirate. Yeah. Just well, because you know, I, I oh, just, what do you think? sticking on this morality thing, Talk um, to me. you know, this idea that, uh, that, you know, Christians, like maybe they don't even understand that their belief is essentially that morality is by fiat, mm. um, you know, is mm -hmm. a thing moral because God says it so, or is a, a thing moral and God enforces morality through command. You know what I, I mean? I agree with you. They were, they mm -hmm. believe it. They believe that because they were never taught what actual morality is. Right. And I remember that distinctly because I went into a morality and ethics class in college thinking I knew what morality was because I read the Bible. I had all the verses memorized and it was a struggle for me to realize that it's not having the answers in the back of the book that makes morality. Right. It's the knowing how to solve the problems as they may come to me in the front yeah. of the books, the unanswered questions, the system that I need to use to solve the questions. That's right. morality. And, and to continue, and just to continue on that thread, is that every advancement in moral behavior uh, throughout civilization has been the result of secular efforts, not religious ones. I mean, or the end of slavery of did not happen mm -hmm. because uh, Christians were fighting for uh, to to free uh, you know uh, black slaves. Uh, the emancipation of women didn't happen because Christian men were saying women need to have more rights. Mm. It, this was all driven, you know, through secular movements. And, right. Uh, mm -hmm. and right. Yeah, for sure. So, George, that's well, amazing. I have, um, I have a hard time with the word moral because I'm never quite sure what people mean when they use it. Uh, ethics mm. to me is is a word that is more solid in my in my own mind. Right. So I, I, I guess where I'm coming from right this moment is <laughs> okay. What do we mean when, uh, among us here right now? What do we mean when we say the word morals? Well, we I, already I have a say... round table topic. We're gonna, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to it. That's a good question for the second half, but we're running out of time on this hatch section. How about we, uh, Dread Pirate, why don't you give me the uh, the fill in the, the blank? blank? Yeah. Okay. Give me some. So, blanks. yeah. So, um, and I, you know, our pre discussion about this was, I think, pretty good that um, being an atheist doesn't mean you're irreligious. Oh, okay. um, as a pastafarian, I, uh, you know, I'm certainly atheistic to the Christian God, the Muslim God, the uh, Jewish God, uh, Buddha, uh, Sikh religion, Hindu religion. Um, pastafarianism for me is an expression of my agnosticism right. uh, towards uh, some of those unanswerable questions uh, about the universe and existence mm. and what came before and what will happen after. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think my belief is, and, you know, the pastafarian or the flying spaghetti monster sort of as an avatar or, uh, you know, a representation of those unknowable things is, uh, as valid um, as any other perspective out there. Yeah. And what I like also about Pasifarian in general is that there's no demand for worship. And right. when I, when I know that's the case, a being like that is whether it's real or not real is far more appealing to me as, as a spokesperson for like a belief system for me than one that not only is ambiguous in its existence, but also demands worship in it. It's like, right. what are you doing? It's just like, prove you exist if you're going to demand that level of love or or respect or fealty, you know? Like, yeah. but if well, you, don't, you know, it, and it's like, uh, you know, like, whereas the, you know, you have the Ten Commandments for Christianity, mm -hmm. uh, Pastafarian has the eight, I'd rather you didn't. You know? <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. 
I love it. Yeah, it's so good. I really do like it. Okay. More, I have a flying spaghetti monster baseball cap that I play disc golf with. Just letting everybody know. Oh, it's, sweet. It's, yeah, I go out with do that, you? and yeah, and I can bring it out next half. But, yeah, uh, yeah, please every, do. Uh, I, I want to get me one. Every player that I've played disc golf with has either been I either atheist or heavily Christian. But in, when you're playing disc golf, it's never a subject that's brought up. But it's nice right. to have the flying spaghetti monster hat out at the same time to represent. Sure, I'd like to see it. Yeah. George Brown, second and a half. Just because you're an atheist. Fill in the blank. Just because I'm an atheist? Yeah. Does that mean that I have to have something to say? Yes, sir. Time? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> because That's I don't. I, my, my head is full of nothing. Sure, fair <laughs> enough. Just because you're an atheist doesn't mean you have to say anything. And you know what? I'm happy with that because we just like I'll, I'll throw this out too. Just because you're an atheist doesn't mean that you're a representation or representative of atheism or that you speak for other atheists too, right? Because one, like one of the things that I dislike when I have to tell people that I'm an atheist is suddenly be the representative spokesperson on atheism. Whereas when someone tells me they're Christian, it's never a question of them being like, well, explain to me what the Bible is and what your business is like. No, they, they just say it as a virtue statement or virtue signaling and they move on to the next topic. Yeah, if I say atheist, I have to answer 40 questions, right? About like, well, where do you get your morals from? How does this happen? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, like guys. Yeah. <laughs> where did the universe come from? Yeah, yeah exactly. Sort of. Like, I, what, I, what kind of weird thing could you say that you're into or that you are <laughs> that you have to then follow up with an explanation of how the universe came about? Like, right. it's only atheism. Mm -hmm. It's only atheism. So we'd appreciate if we didn't have to do that. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's not a bad round table. I think, how are we doing on time, George? You got the timer. Well, my timer is showing something like two minutes left. Ooh, we did it just in the nick of time. <laughs> we got, we have a quick two minutes though. So what do we mean by morality? Morality in my head is a system for how to conduct yourselves uh in a society uh ideally towards the benefit of that society in terms of maximizing welfare and minimizing needless harm uh ethics is a codification of those rules essentially uh larry what do you think uh, i like there's a series of videos by evidence three it says why i'm no longer a christian huh. uh, but he, he said he was in college and he took an ethics course and he thought this will be easy i'm a christian i know all about <laughs> that you know i'm you know i just read the bible but the uh, professor uh, told him, he says, it, it's really more about how to do the right thing when the right thing is not obvious. Right. You know, he says it, it's it more about solving moral, complicated problems in, right. uh, when you come upon them than it is a set, of, a set of answers, like you said, in the back of the book. Exactly. And it's not like riding a bike. You have to actually practice morality. Like you mm -hmm. have to actually understand it to, to do it well. It's not right. by intuition. We're not right. genetically disposed to be good at it. We have yeah. to like work at it. Dread Same with reason. Exactly. Um, I was just going to say uh, dot is trading room. He, he asks, he says, how about this? Just because I don't believe doesn't mean I'm an atheist. Correct. Correct. Um, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's the definition of atheism. If you don't believe in God, you're an atheist. I, mean, I, I, well, I know it says you don't have sufficient evidence. So there are people who would be I like, I don't understand. Hey, I, I'm so, gonna, what do you mean by it? Why don't we get into that in the second, the second half, half of the show? In the second half of the show. <laughs> Stay tuned the show. for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Pop. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a minute to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now and have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. That's every Tuesday around 5.30. Look for us inside at the high top tables. We're usually the loudest and happiest group, and we can be out on the deck, so be sure to check out there as well. On Tuesday nights, we also have a weekly Zoom meeting, and if you'd like to join us on that, email us for uh, 
the link at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can also find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. All right. One that where you want to pick up? Yo, I think we're going to pick up off Dread. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, lo, uh, that is Training Room. He mm. introduced this, uh, uh, this idea that um, just because he doesn't believe, it doesn't make him an atheist. Yes, um, yes. There is a, and he introduced this term called igtheism. Interesting. And that's a different igtheism. angle than I was. Expecting. So this, I, I looked this up and uh, see this on Quora. Uh, an atheist might say there is no evidence that God exists. Mm. An igtheist might say the concept of God is incoherent and talking about God is nonsense. Very interesting. So, that does sound like a lot like that is trading room. I'm going to be honest with you. After like <laughs> you three go. years of YouTube comments. And great listener. I can't. Yeah, I can't. yeah. No, that, that I does sound a lot like that. That's a good, uh, a good twist. Here was my argument. Uh, a Christian is more atheist than he is a theist in the sense that they disbelieve in the far greater collusion of gods who have been proposed and only believe in just one of them. So and they, like, if you take a Christian perspective, it's like, well, they don't believe in Buddha. They don't believe in Allah. They don't believe in blah, 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 blah. All, all those other gods Zeus, that we used Norse, to believe everything. in. But they believe in just one. So if you look at it as like a pie chart. <laughs> right. Of all the gods that have ever existed yeah. throughout civilization. Yeah. Who we yeah. are are essentially just someone who believes in one less God than what a Christian believes in or worships. Yes. And, yeah. and in my head, that's what I meant. That's what I thought uh, that is trading room in is just because I don't believe doesn't necessarily mean I'm an atheist. It's like very true because you could not believe in the greatest pantheon of gods, but that 0.00001% that you do believe in would make you not want to subscribe to the atheism channel so like I, at least i get that and and dread you're you're sort of hovering around on that point too where it's like yeah a lot of christians don't believe in many other gods it's like when you think about it christians are also just we're not so different they're they it's not like a black and white thing we're yeah. all largely atheists it's just we believe in one less god than uh right. the major players george right. brown well, you know, I think it says in the Bible that thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exactly. That's really interesting because that implies that there are other gods. Yes. And maybe the, mm -hmm. maybe the one that we got is not that good. And we should no, take even, it back to gods are us and get a refund. Yeah, even God isn't monotheist himself. He's just like, yeah. don't, step one, don't believe in any other gods. Two, I'm the only God. It's like, okay, this is a weird set of rules. <laughs> Larry, what do you got? Well, I, you know, I just say in that no, it's like atheists uh, don't believe for different reasons. For uh, this set of reasons over here, they don't believe, and we disbelieve because we haven't got the evidence to believe, et sure. cetera. Sure. But no matter the reason, if you don't believe that there's sure. God, you mm -hmm. would fall, um, in my thoughts, you would fall under the atheism camp. Jed? Well, I was going to say that, uh, you know, as far as pastafarianism goes, there is actually some evidence that uh, the flying spaghetti monster exists because, um, you know, physicists, astrophysicists, uh, you know, speculate that in the vicinity of the event horizon of a black hole, matter is spaghettified. <laughs> <laughs> so, true. yeah. I, and in I fact, uh, in <laughs> fact, neutron stars are Your characterized leading to this. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Neutron stars are characterized as having four mm -hmm. types of pasta states of matter that are characterized as, as pasta and yeah. and and made out of sub uh, subatomic particles that have flavor yes I can't forget yeah, that too. yeah exactly yeah. The flavor yeah. quarks yes yeah, yeah. uh exactly. i also want to throw this out uh i think it could be targeted i think to an extent it could be targeted if you don't want to subscribe to the capital a atheism you can at least be atheistic to particular god claims right. and maybe you're right. not a conclusively atheist to all of them maybe there's that one that you do believe in but i think we can come to terms and i think it's the point that we don't recognize as often that a christian and me as an atheist don't believe in this god so we're atheistic to that god and we can find a greater list of things that we're atheistic to under the same premises that i'm atheistic to that one god that they believe in 
but that's where the double standard comes in. And I feel like if we recognize that, we can get, I mean, a, a large number of theists to recognize, oh, there, there's something very interesting in my manner of thinking here. Yeah. Uh, Dred. Yeah, and it, you know, again, one of the principal objects of uh, Pastafarianism is to uh, reduce or eliminate the crossover of church and state. Mm. Because, you know, it, it can't be assumed that everyone who, uh, you know, is a Christian um, or all those who believe necessarily believe that Christianity should be the rule of uh, how the nation is ruled or how any state is ruled. Right. Right. So, you know, our push for um, the separation of church and state is just to say that uh, we're all entitled to believe what we believe. Uh, independent of it being ensconced in law. Hmm. Larry? Well, I was just going to say that uh, earlier in the show, I was talking about different flavors of atheism, you know, the ones that have never believed versus the ones that used to believe. I agree. So now we add another flavor. Atheism is <laughs> just another flavor of atheism. <laughs> and, and to that, I would say we were all, we were all, whether you're religious or not, we were all people who didn't believe in the God. And then immediately or over right. time we were indoctrinated into a belief system sometimes maybe not at all and then there are the born again atheists if you will the people who recognize that they need to buck this you know terrible dogma and go back to how they were before but mm -hmm. then also go through the recovery process of building up uh the 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 reason and getting rid of the fear if it was you know instilled in them on um, unnecessarily you know fabricated supernatural concepts and so that's a process that a lot of people use to like come to terms with like a capital A atheism, but like I can, I can totally see how there's, how there's different flavors, but they all started from the same position, which is by default, not believing in a God, just being a, a de novo human being, like how George was organic atheist and like mm -hmm. unaltered in their thinking. And I feel like we all started that way. And it's, it takes a while to get back to that position again, if you're taken off of it without your own intention, uh, George. What's your thought? Well, I, you know, um, in in deference to Dread Pirate, I I can't speak with enough knowledge about Canada, but in the in the United States, of course, it looks like, uh, from my perspective here in the Bible Belt, like we're heading, you know, hell bent on a on a downward trajectory into a theoc theocratic state, and. Mm -hmm. And so when Christianity officially rules America, will the rest of us have to ride in the back of the bus or will they simply just slaughter us? Mm. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, in the, in the Muslim world, uh, Jewish people were able to coexist very nicely in the back of the bus. You know, mm. it's like Jew Jewish people paid an infidel tax. Mm. It was a s small amount of money every year and, and they got left alone. You know, everybody got along. <laughs> would it be like that? Or would they come after us with machetes? And Eventually, down, right? right. So my thought process of that is we do have a president right now who's ardently Catholic, but also supports abortion and women's rights, right? Like that one of his first objective orders was, you know, uh, women's protections, things that the Catholic Church would not support whatsoever, right? So I, it's not possible. It is possible to be both religious and dutiful to your position as a representative person for our government. And I would also say, if you go back 300 years, we're probably, I wouldn't say more religious than we are now, but definitely not more in favor of the welfare of marginalized people in the society, at least in America. I think we learn over time. And, and I think the voices who are complaining now are only getting louder. And I think we wouldn't have had that. Um, we only gained that ability to speak up over time. Um, so yes, can we become a theocracy? Uh, possibly, but does that necessarily mean that we can start ruling in, in, in lack of favor of like many different groups of people? No, I think I think we can have both at the same time. But yeah, I see what you're talking about, George. Go ahead, Dred. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, you know as we view the statistics of uh, religiosity mm. and the decline in the Christian majority, if yes. there, there really ever was one, mm. um, is that. You know, the, the, the fewer voices there are to speak, the louder they s tend to shout. And, uh, and maybe that's, you know, a part of this, uh, this 
you know, apparent trend towards a theocracy. Very good. Is that it's it's just it's you know it's like the the freedom truckers up here mm. who uh, you know are very you know represent maybe just a couple percent of the truckers overall right. who decided they didn't want their shots, but you know they spend their time honking the loudest and you know obstructing other people's freedoms uh, to push a point which is rather stupid. <laughs> um so you know maybe that maybe it's just a you know there's a, a mirror happening there right just you're a, hearing the a fewer and fewer people just getting louder and louder and louder or the yeah. an establishment the the death screams of an establishment falling up down yeah. right like a tree mm -hmm. falling in the woods does make noise right. right george yeah i think um that's interesting Jed pirate i i mean there you are in canada and I think, you know, we're the 900 pound gorilla. It's like we roll over in the bed and you guys have to ah, stop, you know, you're crushing me, you know. And I, I have a great amount of respect for, for Canada. And, mm. and I re realize that it's, it's a place that is not without its problems, but that not the same problems mm. that, um, that we have. And so, so my first question for you is, do you have the same problems as, as we do here? Oh. In, in, a, in a sense, we do, yeah, because of course we are we have a sovereign, mm. and the sovereign is uh, the titular head of the Church of England, and mm. so therefore we de facto have a state religion, which is Anglicanism. Yeah, it's essentially. And so you you actually pay pay loyal, uh, fealty to the Archbishop of Canterbury, if I hear you right. Well, yeah, whoever, yeah, the Queen's representative, and and of course, um, you know, there's the uh, Attorney General. Uh, or not the attorney general, the um, oh, the queen's representative in the parliament. Hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it is, and, and most Canadians wouldn't even recognize that. And I've certainly, when I've said those very words, you know, kind of get the surprise. And then once it sinks in, it's like, yeah, you're right. That's exactly hmm. how it works. You know, and despite the fact that in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Uh, sections 2a and b refer to the freedom of religious expression hmm. certainly i'm one of those uh groups uh, that are not represented not represented fairly right under that order um and which is what we're struggling against right now throughout Canada as Pastafarians. Yeah, I, I see that. And we have, you know, uh, something I'm, I'm sensing is going on, like what you're talking about, the blowing of the horns, you know, the, the people who are drowning and making the loudest noise, uh, is that we have a resurgence of bullying going on in my country. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, and, and it's almost like it's coming out of, the uh, social media culture where people are anonymous and um, and, un and unaccountable, essentially, you know, I mean, what is a, what does the sound of a horn do? It's, it's monosyllabic, you know, if there was ever a monosyllabic syllabic word mm -hmm. that didn't actually, you know, convey any essential meaning, that's it right there. You know, and, uh, but it, but it, now, it, now it, all, it invades, now it all invades other things, other yeah, all, all other things are being subsumed under this. Well, what uh, I'm and saying, just to get us, just to get us back to the bullying just, here, just to get the best, back to the point. Sorry about that, but <laughs> we can wrap this up real quick. I'm say uh, as one point, final point, the sentiment was there. Now there's a microphone, right? Right. And before right. it was people screaming in the streets. Before that, it, or after that, it was like script. But now there's a bullhorn, and it's beginning people who have this dissent. So I wouldn't blame social media. I would say it's more of like now there's a better magnifying glass to see that that degree of dis dissent that's that's always was present um we guys we guys we have a lot of listener comments that i'd love to be able to go through yeah and, and um one of them is from free thought channel from last week's episode which was on value by the let's chat podcast free thought channel says great show guys and we miss you john richards we're hoping uh to see you again in the future if not check out global atheist news review I believe they're doing a show even t t today. Yeah, uh, we're doing that a show today. That is trading room, both in our chat and in our YouTube comments and in our hearts. Said on our last episode, which was value. As usual, when we think about it, there's always going to be more questions than answers. 
And the deeper I go into the rabbit hole, the more new questions come up. I love it. Always keep asking those questions. Always keep seeing questions. It's a good way. And, and being willing to answer questions is uh, really useful. We appreciate your comment status. Uh, we sometimes get some saucy comments. Uh, Latinite HVAC has replied to me saying, you guys mentioned Alan Aaron Ra. He is ridiculous. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily support that, though. I have had a conversation with the guy. He's very intense, but ridiculous. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Wouldn't say ridiculous. I wouldn't who? say ridiculous. I wouldn't say ridiculous. Who? Aaron Ra. Ra. He's a well-known atheist. Yeah, yeah. He he comes from the 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 fabric of argumentative feedback atheism. Like, hey, I have things to say. I'll have an argument with you, and and it is an intense thing to to try to curb us away from that, or at least show that there's an option to not necessarily be argumentative and, and still have good points. He's well informed on evolution as well, and he likes to go into the detail on that. Sure does. He, <laughs> James Molnar says on our episode should atheism have popes and we have a lot of comments on this one guys should atheism have popes question answer no <laughs> nice and short but also <laughs> Dada's trading room had a comment on should atheism have popes and he said so wait after your discussion you want to have a global representative or president of atheists and it has to be an american dude and that's something that i don't think we necessarily considered the nationality of a representative for atheism would would inherently give power, political favor to whatever nation or country got that representative to represent all of atheism, which is a global association, right? Uh, not something I considered. And so we, I really appreciate that feedback. Um, next one, Inspire Reflection said, uh, I love your videos. I really think we need more of this friendly, relaxed and open energy and communications about atheism. Great job, Tyrone. Inspire Reflection. Thank you. It's a good, it's a good group that we have here. Um, also, Monster Hunter Videos said on the topic of taxes, taxes are neither Christian or unchristian. The Bible nowhere says it's right or wrong for a government to force taxes upon the people. Under a theocracy, people tithe, yes, but 10% of your wealth compared to more than 50% of your government taxes is two different things. Here in the UK, you pay an income tax, national insurance, VAT, after you've already paid tax in your job, council tax, carbon taxes, TV tax, road tax, and whatever other hidden taxes you pay on top of that. Even if you believe in taxes are right, that the level of taxation and extortion is outright robbery. You also have zero choices as to where that money goes, and much of it is likely to go to causes that are wicked or immoral. There should definitely be a cap on how much tax an individual pays. 10% is reasonable. Here in the UK, it's just robbery because you're easily paying more. He's going back into it. He's called it eventually wage slavery. Um, <laughs> here's, here's my thing. Um, taxation of any extent without representation is a bad thing. And while I, I have a problem with religion and, and government colluding with each other, I also see no individual representation of myself in, in, in religion. In fact, religion does not change in any capacity, regardless of how much money I give it. So it's just a question of whether it was already institutionalized to favor me or not. And well, go ahead, Dred. I see your hand. Well, I was going to say, uh, you know, here in Canada, of course, uh, uh, churches are given a statutory tax break on property taxes. And then the remainder that they are not, you know, the remainder that they have to pay tax on, they then seek relief from their municipalities. Mm. So a million dollar property that may have a tax burden initially of uh, say $20,000 a year, 90% uh, of that is taken right off the books through sta statute. Mm. And then the remaining 10%, they go hat in hand to municipal city councils and say, hey, you know, we're poor, G give us a break. Uh, and, and then try to include their parking lots, you know, outside of the, the, the actual places of worship. So uh, yeah, it's not so innocent. No, and not only that, but the comment was made, the Bible nowhere says it's outright right or wrong for a government to force taxes upon its people. I believe Jesus himself said, what belongs to Caesar belongs to Caesar, right? Yeah, give unto, right? yeah. Give unto mammon what is, or Caesar's, what is Caesar's. Yeah, he's like, your money belongs to Caesar. Caesar says he wants more of it, it still belongs to him. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Like he's not saying only 10% and anything other than that is wage slavery. He's saying, pay your taxes. Like yeah. to, 
and and well and, and jesus actually promotes poverty you know as a way of life right yeah, so you, you know. don't need that money anyway <laughs> you don't need the money. give it all up dread oh i'm sorry larry what's up Down I, was, five. I was just thinking that if every um church institution corporation person on the on the in the country would pay 10 percent across the board no exceptions i think we could do that it's just that you know we've we exempt corporations and churches we actually give uh tax breaks uh to uh certain entities so that they they don't have to pay any taxes at all and uh in some instances we'd actually give money to them uh as subsidies etc and uh if we just got rid of all of that and taxed everybody a flat 10 percent, i think we could it would be doable yeah flat tax mm-hmm Am I allowed to say the C R A P P Y word on the radio? Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> okay, okay. Just want to I mean, sure. you're not talking about uh, the actual thing. You're just talking about a condition of something else. I am uh, you say crappy? Person. Yes. <laughs> so, Fred, you got a you got a specific response from one of our commenters. Oh, okay. Uh, they, they asked to remain anonymous. Uh, I was about sure. to say the name. Uh, the, the premise is, cause it's a bit of a long, uh, talk, uh, basically we've made a number of mentions in our videos about how design, the hallmark design is simplicity and how, when we look through the universe, we find a lot of unneeded parts and in fact, hostility to life and, 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 and a lot of unneeded complexity. And so their point is that complexity of the universe as an indication, of whether or not a God is irrelevant, because what if God is just a crappy engineer? <laughs> well there you go and, you and, and like we say too is uh the flying spaghetti monster was drunk for the most part um so <laughs> when he put out everything together no wonder there are so many broken pieces mm, mm. so i have a lot of problems with that that uh train of thinking uh but i i don't want to bias it dread do you want to give a serious more serious answer to that or is that is that the is that your well, best? I, so well, I, you know, it's, it's about entropy, right? So, uh, you know, if someone has questions about, um, you know, the apparent complexity or the brokenness of the universe, uh, mm. a better, a better response is to study more, uh, to learn more about the science of it yes, and to, uh, increase your understanding so that you can, uh, you know, better sort of pick apart your own argument and decide whether or not it's valid. You need to appreciate a frame of reference of what engineering actually is and what design actually is. Yeah. Because if someone tells you the world is designed, but you don't know what design is as a concept, like as a structural engineering concept, yeah. you will believe it and be impressed by how complex it is, or maybe how simple or varied things are without appreciating that designing is all about reducing unneeded parts, making things as simple as they possibly can be, but still as functional or more yeah. functional. That's and, the hallmark and, and, a, and a very important uh, concept is the blind watchmaker. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, Richard Dawkins wrote a book entirely about it. Um, this idea of design being necessary behind the universe. Otherwise, it couldn't exist the way it does. Like, look at the trees. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. sure. But, um, you know, so understanding even the, how that argument is structured and what, uh, what the responses to it have been will go a long way to sort of clearing up any fog that uh, might exist around that question. Yeah. Also Dillahunty, Matt Dillahunty has this great example yeah, of, of if course. you're in a spaceship and you go to a planet and you see this weird rock formation that looks like a spire or something like that. Right. And you've never seen the spire before and you don't have a context of the environment to know how it was made. Can you say that's was designed or was it uh, just earth, wind and, and friction making that happen? Mm -hmm. And when you recognize design, it's not by looking at it and being uh, uh, in love with its, you know, apparent aesthetic. It's by recognizing the intention behind its fabrication, right? And if there was no intention there, if there was no greater plan, then the argument that it was designed is falls apart. And when you look at the world or look at the universe as whole, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of unneeded parts. There's a lot mm -hmm. of things that are not compatible with each other whatsoever. And that's sort of the reason why we try to help people recognize what the tenets of design and engineering actually is so that they can recognize it for themselves and realize that the universe doesn't fall to that, that same level. Larry, what do you think? And that doesn't even get into like birth defects and things that just oh, grow gosh, yeah. don't grow correctly after mm -hmm. their, their, their inception. Mm. 
You yeah. also have there's this thing called Occam's razor. Have you ever heard of that before? Occam's razor. Yes, is... and I have no idea what this razor is. <laughs> well, razors are Nobody philosophical def- razors of our way of cutting away the detritus around an argument yes. to clarify it. Oh. Right. So. And so essentially the Occam's razor, the true Occam's razor, not as it's reported on YouTube, but is basically, it's not the simplest answer is the best answer. It is not that. It is the answer with the least number of assumptions right. tends to be the, most, the best answer. Yeah. And so we have and still makes it work and still makes it work. And so we have still two, we have essentially two, but not a true dichotomy, but two options here. We have either God is a bad engineer or a crappy engineer, or maybe the person who's proposing that doesn't know what engineering is. And the thing is that first go. point comes with all these assumptions of God, all the ideas of the supernatural, this giant ambiguous force that can exist that is also bad at engineering, right? Or maybe this person just doesn't know what engineering actually is and doesn't have a frame of reference of what actually are the hallmarks of it. And is calling everything engineering. The last, the last thing I would say on this is another Matt Dillahunty thing that I like is when you go to that planet and you see that spire, you recognize design by comparing it to things that aren't designed, right? But if you are a Christian or if you are a person who believes that God created everything, you don't have anything that's not designed to compare that against. Because right. everything from the rocks to living organisms to buildings are all design. Yes. So if you don't have a frame of reference of what something isn't, you lose any justification for an absolute claim that something is the case as designed. You need exactly. to, be able to have the frame of reference of a not and an, and it is to make that claim. Yeah. And, 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 and there's the, the, the thing about the uh, watch on the beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you found a watch on a beach, uh, that would be proof that it was designed. Well, no, because it would be a watch on a beach of watches. Yes. A sea of watches. Mm-hmm. Yes. Trees made of watches. You know, like. Because <laughs> theoretically everything is designed. Everything's a watch. Yeah. Everything is a watch. Right. Yeah. So uh, basically you need to know uh, an, another simple example that I used to like is you don't know what a sock is. So you open up a, a, a drawer in your home and you pull out something that looks like a shirt, but you're like, that's a sock. You pull out something that's a pants. You're like, that's a sock. You pull out a sock. That's a sock. (laughs) It's like, you don't know what a sock is and what a sock isn't. We need to first figure that out first before you start calling everything socks. And then once you know what a socks is, you'll be able to see that not everything here is a sock. And that's, that's the point of why we don't Mm -hmm. say God is a crappy engineer. We just say, maybe you should know what engineering is before you make the claim that that is the best engineer. Hey, what's up, Larry? Oh, just another thing real quick. Uh, We're getting close to the end of the, the hour. But uh, you talk about circular arguments when you're raised to believe that every, that God made everything. I mean, you're, from the earliest age, you know, God made the blades, the trees, the sky, the stars, everything. And then later in your life, you point to those things as evidence for God. Hmm. You know, say, well, look at the trees. You don't realize that you've been told they were that God made them, and you're pointing to them as evidence, which is circular. Right. Absolutely. You know, that's, right. That's a tautology. Right. We really need to be wrapping it up, though, for the end of the hour. Okay. So anyone have anything they'd like to plug, Jerry Pirate? How about you? Sure. Yeah. Um, So uh, I am live streaming this as we speak. I do so on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. And I do that at 7 a.m. Sunday mornings, uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, So if you want to see this and comment, uh, as a couple of people do regularly, Sure, uh, sure. Just come to my channel and if you like it, subscribe and press the little bell there so you get notifications. Nice. I also nice. do the uh, Global Atheist News Review at 11 a.m. PDT on very, Sunday. Very cool. So, cool. so uh, my short plug, happy Pride Month. Uh, I'm asexual, but uh, it's still something that I'm even still figuring out. So I'm, it's a good opportunity for everybody. I don't know just figure out the people that are out there, maybe get a better idea of like where you're at and, and just have fun being yourself for the most part. Uh, George Brown, anything you'd like to plug? I wanted to ask Judd Pirate, if um, in Canada, do you, did you also do away with standard time as like we did? And we haven't gotten rid of it yet. The threat, it's coming, it's coming. I want to. Um, our, our province, our, our premier for the province is, uh, saying that this may be the last year that uh, the change is happening. So I'm looking forward to it. I am too. It's blessed relief, man. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> it's, we can't spell America <laughs> without miracle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry, go on ahead. Okay. My con- content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. 
Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. And I have a book on Amazon about atheism called Atheism, What's It All About? If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and many people do, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. everybody.